hope you're all doing well today. Today I'm going to be talking about GitHub Copilot. I am the AI injection that Sheen was talking about in the keynote, was saying, you know, maybe the, uh, the organizers want some AI. So yes, we have some AI today for you all. So we're talking about using GitHub Copilot to help you learn, build, and code. Now, I won't go too much into the AI details because we don't have heaps of time today, but please follow GitHub on all the social medias. There's, you can find us on pretty much every platform. We have fantastic content and there's my social media there as well. If you are tweeting about the event or zeeting or threads or whatever you are doing these days, please tag us. I'd love to see the photos. All right, we're going to go over a few things today. So I'm not going to dive too much into what is AI and the applications of AI, which is in the, um, the talk track, because we don't have heaps of time. But AI is a technology where we're using computers and machines to mimic the problem solving and human making decisions that we as people think, right? So this is where everyone gets a little bit worried about, is AI going to take our jobs? Not going to talk too much about that aspect of AI today, because today I want to talk to you a little bit about GitHub Copilot. But hopefully lots of you in the room have tried different AIs. People have tried ChatGPT, yep, DALI, MidJourney. Cool, these types of generative AI is really taking the world by storm. But the one I wanted to talk to you today is GitHub Copilot. What is it? We'll have a look at a demo of GitHub Copilot as well. We'll look at how to get the most out of GitHub Copilot. Who is using GitHub Copilot in the room? Just a show of hands. Almost, almost who, who hasn't tried it at all? OK, quite a few of you as well. So hopefully some of the things I'm showing you is going to be able to help you build your serverless applications and also just help you with your general coding problems as well. We'll talk about this whole concept of AI pair programming and how to get the most out of conversational AI as well. So GitHub Copilot is a uh, AI pair programmer. It is not the only AI pair programmer out there. I will just say that. Straight up, there are lots of different AI plugins. I've got a link to an article in the resources, which I'll show you at the end, on the top 10 AI plugins for just VS Code. And those are just the top 10. Like, there's lots of different ones. The one I'm focusing on today, though, is GitHub Copilot. So we launched GitHub Copilot a couple of years ago, and we saw developers really take it up. Developers are loving GitHub Copilot for a number of reasons. So GitHub Copilot is an AI pair programmer that helps synthesize code for you. So this here is showing some of the autocomplete. So once we put in a little bit of information, GitHub Copilot is helping us synthesize uh, either whole lines of code or in some cases whole functions as well. So as mentioned, this whole idea is AI pair programming. This is where we're working with AI to get the type of information to build the systems we want to do. It isn't designed for you to go out and go, yep, get up, Copilot, pff, pff, ship, send the code out. That is not what it's designed to do. It is not here to take your jobs. It is here for you to work with it to build really cool applications. If we wanted to, it to do its own thing, we would have called it GitHub Pilot, right? It's not a pilot, it's a co-pilot. You're all working with the GitHub co-pilot, with the AI, to build the things you want to build. So let's have a look at it. Now, I use VS Code, so I'm showing all the demos today in VS Code, because that's how I like to use it. In this case, it's an extension up in VS Code, so we go and find it in uh, the extensions marketplace, we install it, and then we authenticate with GitHub, and then we're ready to go. So here's an example I did a couple of years ago. And oh, yeah, we can see it up there. Cool, it's cut off on here, but this is good. So as mentioned, Lars mentioned, I'm a Twitch streamer. I like to do live coding on Twitch. And I was doing some coding challenges. And one of them popped up to reverse a sentence in JavaScript. And I went, I haven't done JavaScript for quite a long time. Where do I even start? And then light bulb moment went off. I have GitHub Copilot. So I enabled GitHub Copilot. And what I'm doing is I'm providing GitHub Copilot with the context of the problem I want to solve. So when I just put reverse a sentence, it gave me one line of code to reverse a sentence. But what we want to do, in fact, is reverse a sentence, start the new sentence with a capital, remove the capital in any other part of the new sentence, and also include those punctuation marks. So by providing that really clear context to start with, GitHub Copilot is able to suggest to me that we're going to start with a function and we're going to call it reverse sentence. 
pretty logical play, uh, name to call this function. And as I'm going, I'm putting in comments while I'm coding as well. So GitHub Copilot in this instance is suggesting to me uh, specific lines of code. I am accepting those lines by pressing tab and either backspacing things that I don't want or typing over things as well. So we don't just have to blindly accept the suggestions that GitHub Copilot is giving us. We can change them, edit them, or ignore them completely by continuing to type. So in this case, GitHub Copilot is even helping suggest or predict uh, or auto-complete some of the comments as well. Now, when I'm solving coding problems, I think about it from a very logical point of view. I'm a non-coder by background, so if somebody told me to go and reverse this sentence and they wrote it out on a piece of paper, I think, how would I do that? So in this case, I'm cutting it up, so physically cutting the sentence and moving it around, how would I do this? And this is the kind of logical steps. That is one of my favorite lines in this, the fact that GitHub Copilot knows all the punctuation marks. I don't have to type them all out. And I was like, huh, I wouldn't have even thought to put half of those in there. So it is uh, coming up with those for me. And again, it's predicting the things, uh, the lines of code here. I'm accepting this line and I'm changing it um, from a constant as well. So again, we don't just have to blindly accept. So GitHub Copilot is helping me write the comments. It's helping me take those comments as really good context and then providing me the suggestion of line of code. So in this instance, I want to uh, finalize this by reversing the sentence and join it back together. GitHub Copilot is saying, is suggesting the line again. Looks pretty good. I'm going to change this one to a constant. Now, this isn't perfect. I'm going to call that out straight away. Now, some people in the audience might be picking up, there might be a bug here, there might be that. It's not perfect, but this is a pretty good start. So if we look at that, what are we up to? 24 lines of code, and we've done it in not that long at all. And when I was looking at this, I was like, okay, let's see if I can try and get this last sentence myself, and then people on my Twitch stream were trying to do it as well. So one of the senior developers uh, who was watching sent me a message on Discord going, I think this is the final line. And I'm looking at the line of code that he sent me. I'm looking at the line of GitHub Copilot, and they're basically the same. So GitHub Copilot has uh, predicted and helped me write 26 lines of code with a lot of, not prompting it, but not a lot of um, you know, having to know everything to start with. So GitHub Copilot, when we first launched it, so what I was showing you there was the, one of the very first times I used GitHub Copilot back when we first launched it. This little company called Instagram, if you've heard of it, they were looking at it, the single most mind-blowing application machine learning they'd seen. Keeping in mind, this was the, towards the end of 2021, ChatGPT was only just starting to emerge, and this type of generative AI was only just starting to come out. So they're looking at this going, this is mind-blowing what we're seeing here. Another uh, de senior developer said this works so well, never going to develop without it again. And this, we hear this a lot. But once people start using GitHub Copilot, they're like, I, I don't know how I could code before. I don't know how that I could not have this feature and this tool available to me. Now, some people say to me, why aren't we doing these demos live? Well, a few things. I do not trust the internet. You need the internet to use GitHub Copilot. And the other thing is, it's AI. It learns. So when I went to try this again and show people how cool it was on my Twitch stream, people came in late and was like, what have we been doing today? I was like, let me show you all the cool things GitHub Copilot's able to do. And it just suggested the entire thing word for word, letter for letter, because it learns. It's machine learning. So that's why I try not to do these demos again. Because if I did, then all we'd be seeing is the same stuff and be suggesting the whole thing. You wouldn't get each line, which I think is kind of cool when you see it line by line. Now, that was really awesome, some of the stuff we were showing as part of the first iteration of GitHub Copilot. So what we call that is a GitHub Copilot inline autocomplete or the inline functionality. Sometime, I think it was last year, we launched GitHub Copilot Chat, which was another way to interact with AI. So when we have GitHub Copilot Chat, we now have a chat-like functionality, kind of like your uh, chat GPT. And we're now able to ask questions about the code we have. So here I'm saying, can we please explain this code on screen? I've got some JavaScript code there. I'm having a bit of a conversation with GitHub Copilot. So this allows me to learn. 
So it's giving me explanations of the code. It's even suggesting to me, just down here, the potential next question that I could ask GitHub Copilot. So by using this, I'm able to learn a lot from GitHub Copilot. We can also use GitHub Copilot chat to create completely new things. So here I've got a completely blank VS Code screen, and I'm saying, can you help me make a Space Invaders game? Now, what I love about this particular time that I use GitHub, it says, sure, I can do that. But instead of spitting out lines of code, it says, OK, I can help you with the game. But what kind of language do we want to make it in? What are some of the requirements for this game? So it doesn't just say, blurk, here's some code to go write a game. It's, it's clarifying uh, questions for me, right? And it's asking questions before it provides me with code. So I'm saying, yeah, let's just create it in Python because I know Python a little bit better, and that sounds pretty good. So I'll let that go again. So for example, here I'm saying, let me create or help me create the file to get this started. So I'm thinking about this from the point of view of someone who's never done coding before. How would we even get started putting this code in to be able to create the game? Now, what I think is really good about this is this is how humans would interact, right? For example, if you said to me, hey, Mish, can you go build a website? I wouldn't just turn around and go, yep, let me just build this website, code, 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 here's a website. And you're like, what have you built me? No, I would clarify what type of website do you want? Do you want it to be static, dynamic? Do you want to update it? Are we going to have a, an e-commerce website? Is it going to be a profile? Like, give me some um, parameters for how to create this thing. In the same way, if Aaron went to a flight attendant play or a travel agent and said, I want to go on a holiday. Travel agent doesn't turn around and go, yep, here's your holiday. You're booked, off you go. And you're like, where am I going? And who am I going with? No, a flight attendant or a travel agent would say, where would you like to go? Who would you like to go with? When are you looking to go? What is your time frame? What is your budget? They ask all these clarifying questions. That's what GitHub Copilot does. Now I'm going to do a very, very similar thing. We're going to ask it to create a space invaders again, but I'm going to use this new command called slash. So this makes a new file. And what I'm doing here is I'm providing a lot more information before asking GitHub Copilot to go and create the lines of code. In the same way that if, I, if you came to me and said, hey, Mish, I'd like you to build a website. It needs to be a portfolio website. I want one page maybe, and maybe be able to update a little bit. I'd be like, sure, I'll start, start doing a little bit more. So here I'm providing a lot more information about this new file that I want to create. So let's create a game, write it in Python. I want it to be played in a browser on a game window, make the enemies red, make the player blue, put a score counter in the top and a border around the outside. And it goes, great, I've got a lot more information now. I can provide you some lines of code. What I also like about GitHub Copilot chat is it doesn't just provide lines of code when it is providing that code to us. No, what it does is it explains what it is actually provided. So it says, this code is going to do this. Here's how you do it. Now, this code does this, this, and this. So we're learning a lot more from GitHub Copilot rather than just being sent a whole bunch of lines of code. In the same way that if we were working with a senior programmer or a pair programming, and I had a, an issue with my code, and I was like, can you have a look at it? You wouldn't just fix a line of code and just say, off you go. You would probably fix it, oh, we can do this, but, you know, try this out, try this out, and this would fix the thing, right? It's a helpful pair program. It's trying to help us learn at the same time. We can also do some pretty cool things with, uh, with GitHub Copilot as well. So we don't just have to use um, chat to explain code and to understand what's going on. We can write tests. Who likes writing unit tests for their code? Anyone? Well, a couple of people. You can keep writing your unit tests. The rest of us, that's OK. We love you too. But those of you who don't like writing tests and just want to be able to code and build things all day, we can use GitHub Copilot to write the tests for us. And again, it's come back with an explanation for what the test does. In this case, this test creates a new directory and a directory that already exists and creates a directory within the existing non-parent directory. So it's explaining what the test is doing for us. So we're learning a little bit more. We can also use GitHub Copilot to translate language. Does anyone use COBOL? Anyone? A few people in the audience. Right, so this is some COBOL code. We're getting it to explain what it's doing first so we have an understanding. 
but no, not many people are using COBOL anymore, so we want to translate this into Java. So I ask GitHub Copilot. It has a quick think and says, yes, to translate this, it would involve doing these things. Here's the code for it. And it starts synthesizing or pro providing these lines of code to be able to translate this code into another language. And if we like that, we can highlight it, we can grab it there, and we can insert into the code there, and we've got our new Java file, and we can save it there. Now, what's really important about GitHub Copilot chat and the inline functionality is that in order for us to get really good responses and the really clear code and what we actually want, we need to use this thing called prompt engineering. So prompt engineering is about giving very clear natural language instructions to a computer program so it can understand what we want. Again, in the same way that when we go to that travel agent, we're giving very clear instructions about what we want, where we're going for the holiday, who we're going with, what our budget is, how long we want to go for. So by giving very clear instructions to GitHub Copilot, we get what we want. Has anyone tried to like go to Google and Google or Bing? Or does Amazon have a search engine? One of them. If we go to a search engine, we Google or you know, search for pineapple, we're probably going to get lots of different responses. We might get pictures of pineapples. We might get the pen pineapple song on YouTube. We might get pineapple t-shirts, like lots of different things. But if we're looking for a recipe for a pineapple upside down cake, it's probably not going to be on the first two pages that we look for. But if we Googled pineapple upside down cake recipe, we're going to get what we want. So it's about giving very clear instructions in order to get what we want from the machine. We can use things such as when we're doing our prompt crafting and asking for things, using specific and clear variable names. If we're creating a function for the total number of attendees, write that. So GitHub Copilot has that context. When we're using method signatures, again, writing things that make sense. And when we're using our naming conventions, looking at camel case and the types of naming conventions that we want to use. So GitHub Copilot takes into account a number of different contexts. Right here, we have a blank file. So right now, GitHub Copilot has zero context for us to work in. But as soon as I save this file, I'm going to call this sentiment.py, it now has two pieces of context. The name of the file, this is probably something about sentiment analysis, and the extension.py, which means it's written in Python, so it now has the context of Python. So it's able to start suggesting lines of code almost immediately. So import request, import JSON. It understands that this is probably going to be something about sentiment analysis, so it starts providing this text for us. So context is really important. GitHub Copilot also takes into account other contexts as well. First piece of context it has is all its training data, which is all the public code available on the internet. So GitHub Copilot has that as context and as background learning. The next piece of context it takes is the code that's currently on screen. So here I've got a, a, a Blazor application. This is a pretty in-depth AI image recognition analysis thing that we built. But for the purpose of this, we've got a, uh, the file on screen. That is all context for GitHub Copilot to take into account. So all those lines in the open file is there for context. The next piece of context it can take into account is other open files. So in VS Code, I've got three open files across the tab. So I've got my CSS file and my other um, Blazor file there. So those files that are open in other tabs is context for GitHub Copilot. So those of you in the room who have used GitHub Copilot, sometimes you might write something and go, it can read my mind. Can't actually read your mind. It's actually taking context from the other files. So when I was uh, using GitHub Copilot to do some readme files, it provided me with a paragraph that was very similar to pretty much word for word what I would actually write. And I was like, how does it know? And it was because I had three other readme files open, so it's able to take the context of what I'm talking about, the way that I write, the structure of my sentences, and those kinds of things. The other piece of context it takes is, while it can't see what's in each file in your project, it can only see the open files, it can still see the folder structure, which means it understands all the languages it's written in, because it can see the extensions, and has the context for which files you have. 
So, if, for example, if we went in here and said uh, use the CSS file, it would then have the correct directory to that CSS file because it can see the folder structure there. So lots of different contexts. And then the final piece of context it takes is if you're using GitHub Copilot chat, it takes your prompt as well as context. So I've showed you a couple of examples in Python, Java, JavaScript, and COBOL. What else can we code in? So GitHub Copilot has lots of different languages we can code in. Python, Java, JavaScript, Go, Ruby, TypeScript. These are ones that GitHub Copilot is really good at. You know why? Because they're the most popular languages on the internet, which means GitHub Copilot has a lot of data points to take into account in its training set. But if the language exists on the internet, GitHub Copilot is going to know it. It just might not be as proficient in some of those more obscure languages because there's less data points for GitHub Copilot's training context. The IDEs it can use. I showed you VS Code, because that's what I like using. It's my favorite, so we've got VS Code. You can also use it in Visual Studio. You can use it in the JetBrains IDEs and NeoVim as well. So you can use GitHub Copilot inline functionality in all these uh, different IDEs. GitHub Copilot Chat is available for VS Code and Visual Studio and has now just become available for JetBrains IDEs as well. And we might have something to announce about NeoVim later. Now, when we first launched GitHub Copart, remember without the chat functionality, developers experienced 55% faster coding in what they were doing. They were happier in what they built and the types of things that they were building was at a higher quality as well. So this is one of the reasons people are loving it. We also have many of our uh, customers are using it as well. So Accenture did a six month study on GitHub Copilot and they looked at a number of different parameters uh, during this six month study. And I'll show you a few of these. Now the one I really, really like here is this efficiency line. Now the reason I love the efficiency is because yes, the activity and productivity is really good, but a lot of those are subjective. You know, I reported staying this. I felt better, which is very important. Remember, developers staying in the flow is very important because if we keep developers in the flow of what we're doing, we're more likely to finish the task. How many of us in the room have unfinished side projects? Yeah, lots of you, right? And it's often because we come up against a roadblock and we'll go, I will figure that out later. We'll come back to that later. So if we can stay in the flow and we can unblock by using GitHub Copart, we can build things much quicker. Now, my favorite uh, stats here is this efficiency line. 50% more builds by using GitHub Copilot. And they're not just, oh, we're building heaps of stuff and half of it's not working. It's we're building lots of stuff and we have an 84% increase in successful builds. I think that's pretty cool when we're looking at GitHub Copilot. And this is one of the reasons why people and developers are loving it too. I have to think less which is pretty good as a developer. But when I do have to think, it's the fun stuff. So what GitHub Copilot is doing is, as developers, we don't have to go and solve the same problem for the fifth or the tenth or the hundredth or the thousandth time. It's already been solved before. So GitHub Copilot can help us with those repetitive lines of code, those mundane lines of code. And we, as developers, can use our creative thinking, which is what we love doing, and our innovation and we can build the things that we love building. And that's why GitHub Copilot makes things more fun. This is why developers are telling everyone that they, that they want to use GitHub Copilot to build their projects because it's more fun, it's more exciting. It's also like having an actual interpreter. So we saw uh, GitHub Copilot is able to translate from different languages. But it also helps developers who are really proficient in one language, but maybe not another. Now, I went to Japan recently, and it was great using the GitHub, uh, uh, sorry, the um, Google Translate feature. Worked pretty well. We were able to get by. But there's often those times where you're like, I just, I just don't know what they're saying. So having our tour guide that was able to translate for us was very important. Now, I did get married recently last year. And I only had about three months to plan my wedding. So like all good developers, when you get engaged, you turn to GitHub, right? <laughs> so I opened up GitHub Copilot and went, I'm going to build the website for our wedding. I'm going to use GitHub Copilot to help me plan everything. So I went to GitHub Copilot. 
And I told it everything I want to. We're playing the web, a wedding. We've got to do RSVPs and all this kind of stuff. And GitHub Copilot comes back and goes, sorry, I can only assist with programming questions. And all my hopes and dreams are crushed in that moment. But as soon as I turned the conversation around and said, no, 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 go GitHub Copilot. I don't think you understand. I'm building a website for my wedding. And the first thing I wanted to do is build the RSVP page, because that was, seemed like a pretty logical place to start. And GitHub Copilot comes back and goes, oh, if you're building a website, why didn't you say? Here's all the things you need to know for RSVPs for a wedding. Make sure you get the name of all their guests, their email addresses, number attending, which events they would like to attend, any dietary requirements, special requests. And I'm like, oh, GitHub Copilot is a wedding planner. We just got to ask the right questions, right? The other thing GitHub Copilot helped me with was being able to understand some of the features within, this, uh, within the code that it was providing me. So for my website, I had a box for adults and a box for kids. How many adults are coming? How many kids are coming in your party? But not everyone has kids that were coming. So I was like, OK, GitHub Copilot, if I don't set a minimum maximum value in that box, what is the default? GitHub Copilot came back and said, well, yes, you can set a zero value input by adding the minimum uh, attribute here. So this is really good. It was able to help me understand, and I was able to learn a little bit more as well. Like all good developers, I also wanted light and dark mode on my website. Now, this one was a little bit trickier, because you know, if I said to you all, let's go build some CSS for light and dark mode, we all do it slightly differently. There's always a few different ways to do it. So GitHub Copilot was able to help me come up with a few different ways. The first couple of ways I tried with it didn't work, so I changed tack and ended up putting it in one CSS file. But I'm able to ask questions about the rest of the website too. How do I make it better? We can see here it's not providing any lines of code. It's just providing context for the actual website. So how do I do these things? How do I you know, optimize my website? How do I reduce, uh, you know, optimize images? It's able to provide me with steps how to do that. So when we have a look at it, we go light and dark mode, and it works. And I was really happy and really excited. And all my developer friends who got um, our website was like, I love the light and dark mode. The rest of my family are like, what? <laughs> it's only for developers. I went a little bit further. So yesterday, our uh, wedding video just dropped, our highlights reel. So I really wanted to put this on our website. So I went to open up GitHub Copilot again, said, how do I add this video to my website? Uh, the video should be. Uh, above all those images you saw, so above the Lightroom box and the, the width of and GitHub Copilot says, yep, again, it gives me a little bit of an explanation about what it's providing me, then provides me with that line of code. So I can jump down to where I want to add that line of code in, can check it first as well, and then I can jump down and I can add that line of code in where I want it. Now, I can continue the conversation as well. I don't just have to leave this. So I looked at this and went, oh, it looks pretty good, but I want to also maybe add an autoplay, which I found out doesn't work in most browsers, but let's add an autoplay. And it provides me with a little bit of an updated uh, code there as well, and I can go and insert that over. So we're able to do all these things with GitHub Copilot, have these conversations. So since launching GitHub Copilot, we now have over 1.5, I think it is now, 1.5 million developers using GitHub Copilot. People are loving it. They're feeling more fulfilled in their jobs. Again, they're seeing that faster coding. This is a stat I love and is a little bit scary, and I believe it's gone up since I first did this slide, which is 46% of the code now committed to the internet is written by an AI, GitHub, Copilot, or other. So that's pretty, a little bit scary, but also kind of cool. And we have, oh, I didn't update that one, but we now have over 50,000 businesses using GitHub Copilot for business as well. And our CEO came out the other day and said, AI developer tooling, not just GitHub Copilot, but AI-powered developer tools will add 1.5 trillion to the global GDP. So not just GitHub Copilot, but develop AI developer tool. And this is why it's important, because AI is making us more productive, it is making us more efficient, it is making us happy as developers, and it is able to increase our potential as a human race as well. But some of you in the room are like, oh, I'm either working on proprietary code or I'm working on something I don't want my, the code that GitHub Copilot is suggesting to me. 
to be anywhere else. It's got to be completely new. So we can filter this out by going to our GitHub Copilot settings. So this one's on my alt account because I'm part of the GitHub org, so GitHub controls my GitHub Copilot settings, which is the benefit of using GitHub Copilot for business. But on a personal account, I can go and I can change and tell GitHub Copilot to either allow or block suggestions that match public lines of code. It's about 150 characters. So if it's 150 characters or more that matches code, it won't suggest it to me. But there is a lot of similar code out there. There's not many ways, for example, to solve fizz buzz. There's probably about three. So if you filter out that, you're not going to get any suggestions from GitHub Copilot. I recently went to update my website and I said, can you add, uh, provide me with some code for a contact form? Started providing me the code and went, oh, no, sorry, that matches other code out there. Right? There's not that many ways to do a contact form. So think about whether it's actually useful to have this filter or not. What's also cool about GitHub Copilot is we don't just have to use it in our IDE. As, edit, as uh, developers, we spend a lot of time in the editor, but we also spend it in other ways as well. So we can use the command line. Now, this is a little bit outdated, so it looks a little bit different now, but we can use the command line to ask GitHub-specific questions. So we can say, you know, how do we clone a repository with GitHub? We can also ask uh, Git-related questions. So Git commands, how do I make a commit? And it can provide me with that explanation. And because we're all amazing and we always remember every single terminal command ever, right, we can ask GitHub Copilot to help us with terminal-based commands as well. So if you haven't tried it, go to the website, give it a try. It's 60 days um, available if you'd like to try it for free for 60 days for those who have, haven't tried it in the room. I do have some really cool uh, stuff to show you as well, but I know we're out of time, so if you do want to see some of the cool things that are coming next, come have a chat to me or head to our YouTube uh, page because we've got some amazing videos of the new features that are coming for everyone, and come and chat to me. I'll be available now till the end of the break, and I'll put stickers along the stage for anyone who wants stickers. So thanks so much to the team, and I'll just skip down to the resources page so you can see that. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Mish.